absolutely right. So a lot of conversations now happen on the internet rather than just your know, one-to-one. So what Black Swan done is listen to those conversations in mass, and we use AI to be able to detect trends. So before a movie even comes out, we can tell how excited people are, you know, and how many people are going to go and watch it. Which is quite interesting when you think about Hollywood. Uh, so many movie executives thinking they can predict the next big thing, but there's been flop after flop but for many decades. But you now, even though you're not close to the content in, in the traditional sense, you think you can tell more about what's going to be hit versus a Hollywood executive? Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a great question. So humans are brilliant predictors, but we do tend to get it wrong every so often. Machines are a bit more consistent. So whereas we don't necessarily understand the magic, they certainly know more mathematically what's likely to happen. So a bit more consistent in our predictions. Taste buds. Let's get down to quinoa. I mean, I, I must uh, disclose I'm a, a keen fan of quinoa. Oh, okay. I love it. But how could you tell that food innovation and food taste would sort of veer off in that direction? So early trends start by sort of enthusiasts in places, you know, cookery websites and, you know, blogs where people are trying new food. So these early trends start in these strange places in the internet where people get more and more enthusiastic. We then just measure their growth and can forecast it out in the future to see when it's going to become, you know, something quite big which a brand can act on. You can see how enthusiastic advertisers and marketers would be about this information but from the user side and from what we've all followed recently the Cambridge Analytica scandal mm -hmm. with Facebook how different are you to a Cambridge Analytica yeah, so, I mean, it was, it was terrible, really, because Cambridge Analytica essentially stole data, which is the same as stealing anything, really, is, you know, quite poor behaviour. But also, Black Swan is really just interested in trends, so we're not really interested in individuals. We're more really looking at where trends are going and what people are likely to do in mass, rather than, you know, as a single person, which I means you don't kind of end up with that scary thing where you're trying to influence an individual person, you know, without their consent. How political can you get, though? Because one of the messages here was that it's OK to be very close to the consumer very close with targeted marketing but if it's about politics hey hands off this is a, a no-go zone now for, for many people so how close can you get on the political campaigns? Well, um, President Trump's made it quite easy if he wanted to technically because of his use of Twitter and the reactions of people to everything he says on Twitter. So, you know, mathematically, you can get incredibly close. And, uh, you know, it's uh, you, your choice whether you want to or not. And we, we don't really get involved in politics. What does GDPR mean for you? The, the new European data protection rules are coming to force. It feels as though you now need the uh, consent of many users across Europe. Does it hamper some of your research gathering? Well, it's certainly been a lot of work for Black Swan as a company, um, but actually it really helps because a lot of this was never really defined before things like GDPR, and having guidelines means you can actually stay within them. I mean, for public posts, which is what we really f uh, focus on, you know, by posting you're sort of opting in anyway. So a lot of our work, you know, we don't specifically need to search for GDPR because people have actually said, I but want you to hear this. necessarily. I mean, around Facebook, we all have the ability to change our options and oh. adopt some level of privacy. So doesn't that stop the amount of of information that you can take from a social media website? Yeah, and it should. You know, if people are putting their private Facebook things, we shouldn't really, you know, have anything to do with it. And um, the forums are really the more public forums that people are posting on, you know, a blog or, or Twitter where people are deliberately posting publicly. And that's really the only information that Black Swan tends to mine. Are you doing anything with in-store data? Everyone's talking about how we now have a lot of connected devices when we go shopping. So you have uh, for instance, augmented reality in store, you have someone gauging your reaction to some of the material you're seeing. Is that the next frontier? You can, you can mine that type of thing? When data? you hack the Black Swan business plan. So yeah, having uh, this social information is really, really useful. When it becomes great is when you can mix it with in-store data. So sales data, for example, you know, now we can actually accurately predict sales six months in the future because we've matched it with that social data. But the same with anything, footfall or you know, VR, anything. We can mix the data together and make sort of long-term forecasts about how that will behave. This conversation highlights the tug of war that's been taking place all week between the creators and the, the tech gurus yes. of the industry, right? <laughs> Where people feel as though you're taking over and you're driving a lot of decisions now, driving behaviours where the creative types who would go back to the drawing board and craft something mm. visually for a campaign are saying, there's too much of you, we're losing this and just because you know what people want and how to get in front of them, you actually need someone to, to be drawing and be behind the scenes doing the creative. Do you think that's valid? I agree with him totally. <laughs> I mean, we are nerds. Uh -huh. but yeah, well, yeah, sorry. And, we, you know, we are, essentially, it's a tool. You know, it's designed to help people, not really to take over people. And, like, the creators we have in Black Swan, you know, they, uh, we, we're able to give them data to help them, you know, make their creative decisions. We don't make the creative decisions they do.
nightmare. So he or she will be responsible from the data we can give them to make a really great creative experience. So for me, we're hopefully giving these guys more tools rather than sort of trying to replace it. Edelman had some research out this week, uh, poised for, for can lines, and a message to the industry, which is the, the trust that's been uh, effectively taken away from social media after everything we've seen, and we're still uncovering the worst of it. I think there's still more to come, and we see this in this drip feed process. And Edelman's message was that it's very negative to be communicating like that, and as a result, social media has taken a knock. What do you make of the trust equation? given what you're doing and do you think there'll be a backlash at some point where people say oh, I don't want you knowing all this about us? Yeah I think it's really helpful so I feel a lot of us in the industry felt as if there were no guidelines or really you know we weren't really advised either way I mean of course it's you know put us under a lot of spotlight and made us sort of make sure they're asking a lot of questions but you know now we actually do have guidelines and people worrying about these things it means you can't put your foot in touch you know accidentally so it, we, you know we welcome it it's definitely much harder but you know at least we know now we're doing the right thing by validation rather by guesswork. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.